Hello, my name is Nupur Raji. I am at the Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center in Boston, and I'm a professor at, uh, of medicine at Harvard Medical School. I'm going to be presenting data on l which is a BCMA-targeted T-cell engaging bispecific uh, antibody. I'm going to be talking about magnetism 1, which was our first in human uh, clinical trial using l Um, As you all are uh, familiar, l is a bispecific T-cell engager. It's a humanized bispecific antibody which targets BCMA, and it also targets CD3 on T-cells and induces selective cytotoxic T-cell response against myeloma cells. Um, this trial was a first in human trial, as I've already mentioned, in the relapse refractory setting. We treated 55 patients who received l as monotherapy at doses of greater than 215 micrograms per uh, kilogram. Uh, they received this subcutaneously. Obviously, our intent was to look at uh, safety. We also looked at pharmacokinetics, and we did look at response by IMWG criteria. And the data that we presented at this year's ASH is uh, the data cutoff for this was September 30th, 2022. As you can see out here in these 55 patients, these were generally very heavily pretreated patients. They'd had a median of five prior lines of treatment. What was interesting to note in this subset of patients was the fact that a significant proportion of these patients had high risk cytogenetics, about 30% or so. We were fortunate to see that we represented both African-American as well as Asians in this uh, small clinical trial. Important to note that the majority of patients, close to 100%, had seen an anti-CD38 monoclonal antibody. And unlike some of the other bispecific T-cell engagers, we had allowed prior BCMA-targeted therapy on this trial. So uh, about 14% of these had had an anti-BCMA ADC, as well as a subset of patients had had prior CAR T-cells directed against BCMA. This, in general, was a well-tolerated bispecific T-cell engager, as is uh, not surprising. The most common treatment emergent adverse events included uh, hematologic toxicity, both neutropenia, anemia, uh, lymphopenia, and thrombocytopenia. This was seen pretty much throughout the course of the trial. We did see CRS in the majority of our patients, but when we went up to the 44 milligram step up priming plus pre-medication, the overall incidence of CRS dropped down to about 67%, and the majority of the CRS was notable to be grade one and two. We did see some infectious related uh, problems uh, uh, with this uh, bispecific T-cell engager, and specifically, we had grade three and four uh, infectious related uh, problems in about 21% of patients. And we did have one patient who died of adenovirus infection. When you look at the pharmacokinetics of l we found that uh, with dose escalation, um, there was uh, uh, l uh, exposure was dose dependent. Uh, whether they got it weekly or Q2 weekly, uh, it achieved an exposure in the range which was associated with antimyeloma activity. What we were also able to demonstrate for the first time was that in patients who had responses, we saw reductions in soluble uh, BCMA levels. And when you look at the overall response rate in this patient population at a median follow-up of 12 months, the overall response rate was 64% with CRs and stringent CRs seen in 38% of patients. As mentioned previously, a subset of these patients had had prior BCMA. And even in those patients, albeit the response rates were a little bit lower than the entire population, we saw 54% of these patients responding. For patients who were responding, the median time to response on this trial was about a month or so. We've gone and looked uh, 
at in-depth uh, impact on genetics with outcomes. And I think that data is still preliminary, but we will be presenting that in full at a future meeting. Uh, when you look at the duration of response in all responders, the median duration of response in this patient population was 17.1 month. And if you look at patients who achieved a complete response or a stringent complete response, we saw that 13 of these patients were actually MRD evaluable. And those patients who were MRD evaluable, 100% of them were MRD negative. 62% of these remained MRD negative beyond six months, and about 31% remained MRD negative beyond 12 months, which uh, underscores the persistence of response in this patient population. This translated into a progression-free survival of this very heavily pretreated patient population of 11.8 months. So to conclude, we were able to show that elranitumab had a manageable safety profile. We were able to use the step-up dosing and decrease the rate of CRS. With this, we saw an overall response rate of about 64% with a CR and a stringent CR rate of 38%. And the duration of response for all responders was 17.1 month. We saw MRD negativity in a significant proportion of patients, and this translated into a progression Tree survival of 11.8 months in this patient population. There are other ongoing clinical trials, Magnetism 3, which was also presented at ASH, as well as Magnetism 5, which are ongoing clinical trials trying to assess the safety and the efficacy of ranitumab in the context of relapse refractory myeloma. Thank you.